Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Unless it's your first time, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you do, hit the notification bell, go to the updates. I'm really excited for today's video. It's Seller Saturday, so if you're new to this, I try to pick something off the seller shelves and drink it and actually start drinking this stash down. And uh, it seems to be, you know, something that people enjoy. And uh, uh, my favorite part of it, besides drinking delicious beer, well, usually delicious, is uh, when people tell me, like, oh, yeah, no, I've been starting to drink down my stash a little bit. Or you inspired me and I grabbed this out of, uh, you know, the closet, the cellar, wherever you uh, age beer. So uh, definitely if you are drinking uh, a beer that you have been aging, let me know in the comment section. I love that stuff. So I mentioned in a different video recently uh, a little bit of sometimes how I pick a beer to review. And uh, for the Cellar Saturday, it's almost always just what I'm in the mood for. Um, and, and maybe someone like comments like, hey, I see you have that, you know, can you review it? But this one has a little unique reason why I'm reviewing it. Uh, so um, sometimes I look for like divine inspiration, right? And uh, a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I did uh, Bell's Expedition Stout aged in bourbon barrels because when I was driving home, I saw a Bell sticker in a car. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should do a Bell's beer. Well, this one I found on the ground the other day because our kitten got down here and apparently got on the beer shelves and knocked over a barley wine over here, just knocked it over on the shelf. Whereas this one knocked from up here. Uh, I didn't get out a measuring tape to measure it, but I'm 6'4", and I did measure it to my body, and it came up to right here. <laughs> so, I don't know, five foot drop? I don't know how it didn't shatter. I don't know how on earth that could happen. But it seems to be intact. Hopefully no glass splintered on the inside, and I'll drink glass and die. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I also do happen to love this beer. Um, this is one my friend Gabe and I had when they released it, and we're like, whoa, this beer's really good. And then, um, you know, it's a little pricey, you know, Brooklyn, these bigger ones like um, Black Ops and stuff can be a little pricey, but it was just so good. And then I was able to find it somewhere uh, at a pretty cheap for the for what it was originally uh, price and bought a couple more. So this I have three counting this one. And it's like one of those things. I love this beer so much. I don't want to drink it because I don't want it to run out because they don't make it anymore. But it's like, yeah, but it's just going to keep sitting there. So I'm glad the cat knocked it over. Uh, it's a barley wine style ale aged in bourbon barrels. It's 13.3% ABV. If I didn't say the name, it's Hand and Seal. You probably already know that because it'll be in the title. Uh, it's from 2014. Uh, it's from quarter three, so it's not exactly seven years old, probably six and a half at this point. Uh, in the 20th year of his reign, our brewmaster brought forth a new wonderment for the, uh, for the people. Barley wine style ale, an old and once exclusive drink of the British nobility, would be produced anew in Brooklyn. The Brooklyn brewing team uh, toiled to create a complex liquid with, with rich flavors of floor malted barley shining through layers of vanilla, coconut, and floral notes provided by aging in casts of bourbon oak, culminating in 100% bottle fermentation. I do think it's cool that they do the bottle fermentation. Uh, and then, quote, our hand and our seal is our promise to you of the deliciousness within Brewmaster Garrett Oliver. Uh, this is blend number two. For those of you keeping score, it is cellar temperature, so it's at 50, 55 degrees exactly. Yeah, I'm really excited. Nice. So I definitely had it fresh in 2014. I don't remember the last time I had it. I don't remember if I've ever reviewed it. I actually should have looked that up. I'm kind of curious now. Um, not much of a head. I'm not surprised. It's hmm. It's brown, but there is a decent amount of crimson in it. It's a little lighter than some of the other barley wines I've had lately, um, but not much. Just a little. That's why I said hmm because I was thinking it'd be a little darker just based on ones I've had more recently. But it's definitely in that spectrum that you would think a barley wine would be and yeah i mean given the abv given um you know i don't know maybe how long it's been in the bottle for there's no real carbon or no, like no real head to speak of um i do see some bubbles coming up so i mean there is carbonation there but it's certainly not some super effervescent looking thing either uh definitely looks apart it's gonna see aroma 
So yeah, it smells beautiful. Um, it is English style, if I didn't say that, so it shouldn't be too overly hopped like an American style, like a Sierra Nevada, uh, Sierra Nevada uh, barley wine, uh, barrel aged or not. Um, so it's, it's gonna be more sweet caramel notes, um, less of that hoppiness, and there's overlap. It's really, to me, that the hoppy, West Coast hoppiness is the difference between an American and English style. Definitely getting the figs, the dates, you know, dried fruit like that, raisins. Um, you get some of that molasses, that brown bread that's typical of, of the uh, style. A, a nice, like, candy, like brown sugar, but then there's a nice, it's not full-on caramel. It's almost like um, like you're on your way there, so you're, you're caramelizing some sugars. Like, it has that kind of a thing. A non-medicinal cherry note, which I'm really appreciating. Then just some straight caramel. You do get the vanilla. I do see that coconut that they mentioned. I didn't think I would. I don't remember. I just remember loving this beer. I don't remember every tasting note and, and uh, aroma note I had. But um, I like that they said it in the bottle. I'll, I'll go along with that. Interestingly, I'm not getting bourbon specific right now. Um... But I also don't think like Black Ops is that bourbon forward either. It's not really Brooklyn's, you know, main objective. I don't think anyway, based on the barely stuff I have had from them, that they overly do it compared to some other breweries. I shouldn't say overly, but like they don't, they don't uh, as aggressively do it. I should say. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. Like this smells amazing, and there is so much going on. It's so easily identifiable. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I, honestly, I probably could just keep going in, finding new stuff and appreciating it. But the, the sake of, I hate to say brevity, because I'm sure this is already pretty long and I haven't even taken a sip yet. But for brevity's sake, I'll stop talking about the aroma and I'll get into the taste. Cheers. That has aged beautifully. That, wow. Yep. <laughs> that's amazing um it has right off the bat before i start explaining everything one of the reasons i think this is drinking so amazingly is it has that sweetness that i like in the style but then things like molasses come through um and i recently i, I buy dates relatively common like it, it's it's a pretty common occurrence i get dates and um because I've been having some barley wines and things that were making me think figs, I realized I haven't had a fig in a long time. And a lot of it was like memories of eating Fig Newtons probably, honestly, 20 years ago was like the last time I remember maybe having a Fig Newton. I might have bought some in college. Let's say 15 years ago. We'll say 15 years ago. But I'm like, what does an actual fig taste like? So I actually just recently bought some figs. And... They are sweet, but interestingly, the way it's coming across in this beer is there's some sweetness, the caramel, things like that I mentioned before. And again, I'll be more specific in a moment. But then when it starts drying out, one of the flavors, especially coupled with the molasses, is fig. And it's weird because the other day I wanted something sweet. I didn't want to eat some candy, so I actually had some figs to kind of scratch that itch of me wanting sweetness. So it's kind of a really big trip for me, at least because of what I've recently consumed, that that's actually doing the opposite here and part of the drying experience. Um, but yeah, that sweetness and then what, what's being brought out, I, I, dryness might be the wrong word, although there is dryness to the beer. Uh, well, it is bringing balance to it, but I, it's not necessarily dryness that I'm speaking about. Um, not savory, not, surely not sour, nothing like that. What's the right word? I, I'm sorry, I'm flaking on the right word for that. It is complexity for sure, but there, there's something more specific I should be thinking, and I, I just, I can't think of what it is. The alcohol, which is not overly done, but that is definitely a thing that is drying. But even into the finish and the finish, there is a lot of residual sweetness that's fighting that dryness. But it 
for that nice balance. The thing I was talking about before with the molasses and that fig, yeah, it's just, it's really bothered me what that is. It, it's, it's lessening of the sweetness, but like, I just feel like there should be a, a better word for that. But anyway, stop harping on that. What I am getting initially, you're getting the big date and raisin thing. You're getting the caramel. You're getting honey. You're getting um, vanilla. So again, I'm glad they said that. I do get that in the aroma. You are getting, I would say, nondescript sweet uh, booze. Um, I, I don't know if I would go bourbon immediately. Uh, I would believe rum. Um, I, would, I mean, I'll probably guess bourbon just because that seems to be the most common thing people will age beer in. But um, it, it's not like, oh, this is so obviously whiskey or bourbon or, you know, like it's, it's not so obvious. Um, you get like the whispers of baking spices, which is really pleasant in this, um, you know, yeah, it's just, it's, it's killer. It, it's such a killer beer. I said in the aroma, a non-medicinal cherry. You get a nice sweet cherryness in there. I am prepared to make a claim about that molasses thing. The molasses, it's not soy saucy. It's nothing that extreme. But molasses is the closest thing. And it's a step towards savory. It's not, that's not a savory thing. I mean, I guess you could make it into a savory thing, but I don't think in and of itself molasses is savory. But if your starting point is eating sugar or caramel or something, then you have some molasses. I think you will understand what I mean by like, oh, it's taking me into the other direction. The pendulum is swinging the other way. It's being pulled the other way probably more accurately. And that is bringing some nice balance to it. And then you get into some drying qualities. That's a much better way to articulate what I was trying to say before. Like the aroma, I could keep going. Like there, there is so many familiar things, most of them that are easy to identify, I've already said. But there are other things that's like, ah, that is familiar. What is it? Um, I could see like a little bit of a sweet apple-ness to this. Um, add brandy to what um, could be the barrel aging. Um, speaking of, like makes me think of like apple brandy. Um, it's not that strong, but like I wouldn't be surprised if it had been that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to wrap it up because I could keep going. And, and this it's clear how much I love this beer. And I'm glad I have two more bottles. Unless the cat knocks them off and they break. Uh, so thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Check me out on Instagram and on Tap. It's no hype beer reviews at both of those places. So please, please like, comment, subscribe. And most importantly, imbibe. Cheers, everyone.